we get three projects in one place. The space is gonna be three spheres and just, you know, an aquascape quality project. Can't wait to show you the other two. The reason I'm not gonna show you guys the other two right now is because of a little secret. I don't know exactly what we're gonna build. <laughs> I'm gonna go over there and meet with customer and see if we can't come up with a great design. I had something in mind, but then I changed my mind and I do that a lot. And so I think I wanna do something a little different, a little bit more unique, something we've never done before. You guys just wait to see what we do there. All right, we're out here starting a new project. It may be our last project of the year. Fingers crossed and it's not, but at least we get three projects in one place. The first one we're doing is gonna be a fountainscape behind us. Everything's moving right along. You can see we've got everything protected. Something we really, really try to pay a lot of attention to is making sure we prep the area and keep it as clean as we possibly can before we start construction. The last thing I would wanna do is build a gorgeous looking feature in here. And then a little piece of this gravel ends up putting putting a scratch mark on our patio. Even like this little piece of gravel here terrifies me because the lasting memory should be our gorgeous feature, not a scratch in the patio. So protecting this, spending a little extra time just makes a lot of sense. You can see Micho and Juanudi over here digging a trench. The reason they're digging a trench is we have to get a pipe cord in underneath this, not for electric, but for water. We've already got electric over there, but they never put a pipe in for us to do uh, an automatic fill valve. We'll be able to punch a pipe through here and then run an automatic fill line. The space is gonna be three spheres and just, you know, an aquascape quality project. Can't wait to show you the other two. The reason I'm not gonna show you guys the other two right now is because of a little secret. I don't know exactly what we're gonna build. <laughs> I'm gonna go over there and meet with customer and see if we can't come up with a great design. I had something in mind, but then I changed my mind and I do that a lot. And so I think I wanna do something a little different, a little bit more unique, something we've never done before. You guys just wait to see what we do there and we should get this one done today. Okay, so we've got the fabric in. Next step is getting the liner, then of course more fabric. Then we are going to be putting our aqua blocks in, which are sitting over here as well as that pump vault, which sits in that recessed area right behind Daniel. Next thing, we're gonna slip this thing in, get it all good, make sure we don't let any crap fall in behind us. There was a lot of base material and angular rock that we're gonna make sure that we don't want to get underneath or between the liner and fabric. Take extra special care of that. Brian's meeting with the customer over there, sharing his vision, and then we are going to start rolling once we get the liner fabric aqua blocks in. We'll start setting the spheres, figure out plumbing, and then we are well on our way to another incredible fountainscape out here. I don't know if you can see it out here, but it is pretty dark. The lights are already on. We got close. We got the last like 10 feet of edging. However, the electric never got finished. As you can see, it is stubbed up right there next to Matthew. We can't even run this sucker except via extension cord. So we're not gonna worry about it tonight. We are gonna be back tomorrow, hopefully, if the weather holds out, but really love the spheres and how they turned out. My only concern is gonna be the amount of splash on this patio. So we've got our valve box located right there with three ball valves going to each individual sphere. So we can really fine tune and dial in the flow on these, but love the big Pennsylvania Fieldstone. I know it just looks like a sea of gravel right now. We've got another chunk there, but we will have aquatic plants next spring to really, really green this place up and soften up the architectural part of the design, which is the stack slate spheres. And then obviously all the gravel and rock. There you go. So we're gonna wrap it today Matt, how you feel? I feel wonderful. Wonderful, wonderful. Corey? Great, grand, one. That's good. Like Corey's gonna go rob a bank. Next time, you may see him on America's Most Wanted, but don't tell anybody. What is up, everybody? We are back again, back at it, out here at this beautiful site of our Fountainscape project. Behind me, we've got one circle there that we are going to be putting a bunch of basalt columns in, and then back over there behind me, we will be putting in another identical feature over in that spot. The guys just got here. We are unloading the fabric, the plywood, all that stuff to cover up. This beautiful stamped concrete and concrete area right here because we have to get all of the dirt from this hole as well as from that one over there into the truck and out of here. First order of business, get everything covered up so we don't make a mess. Next order of business is get the gravel out from here as well as from over there. We will use that to backfill inside the liner between our aqua blocks and then we will get in here and we're just gonna start digging all this stuff out. We're gonna go deep with these aqua blocks, make a large reservoir underneath here to make it as sustainable as possible so that we would ideally like to get this thing winter 
to her running. That is the goal. We obviously have some utilities that we have to move. That is a chase that goes, that four inch pipe is a chase that goes underground all the way over to that one, to that feature that's over there on the backside of those poles. And then the electric is obviously going to have to be moved as well. So that'll be moved off to the side somewhere. Once we get the reservoir in, we're gonna build a retaining wall that goes up about 12 to 15 inches high above grade here to help retain everything. And then we will build our basalt column collection inside of that brick wall. It's a little brisk. We've got 30 mile an hour winds out here. I've seen a couple snow flurries so far, so it is going to be a great day. We're just gonna have to stay warm by staying busy. All right then, let's go. All right, so we've got aqua blocks getting built. We've got kind of a one-man job over here digging this out. That truck's almost full and ready to get out of here. We've got Helfrich over here overseeing the overall design. And we're just gonna keep cruising right along. A couple of the other guys are back over on the other side, way all the way over there. Just kind of buttoning up some of the loose ends that we didn't finish on the first day. Right now we're gonna get this thing dug, get the trucks out of here so that they can get back empty. And we come back and keep going, so let's go. So very familiar sight so far this video is this round area right here where the fountainscape is going. You can see that the majority of this dirt is out of here. We're just kind of cleaning up, getting the last little bit to kind of level this end off so that when we put our sand and everything in there, we'll have the correct elevation so that when we build our wall on top of the aqua box, it will be good to go. Just a little bit of cleanup, then sand fabric, liner fabric. And then you can see right there where that orange dot is, that is going to be where the pump vault is located. We will have two pumps on this, controlling half of the basalt rocks with each one of them. I'm gonna go ahead and drop this camera and help these guys get this done. So what our master workers over here are doing is we are laying an interior course of wall stone inside on top of the reservoir, on top of the gravel that you see Juan leveling out there. What this is going to do is this is going to act as kind of the barrier or the retaining wall, if you will, for our base material, which will lay in this trench right in through here. The reason we're doing this wall is we don't want that base material to migrate back inside on top of the reservoir, go down in the aqua blocks and be compromised in any way. So we've got fabric underneath all of these bricks and then we'll put our limestone chips down in here no screenings just chips that will act as our base material and then we are going to build a wall in this trough that will butt up to the backside or the concrete sidewalk patio area right here so the liner comes up and then terminates right here and brick wall that we are building in this trough will hold this liner up high as well as hold back all of the gravel and everything on the inside this wall this interior wall will be covered with gravel but like I said it's just acting as merely a retaining wall inside of the reservoir to hold back our base material which is super crucial so that this wall that we build on top of the base doesn't sink or settle or get compromised in any way that's what we're doing now once we get this wall built we're gonna glue these blocks down so they're not moving and then we'll go ahead and start get our base material in and then we'll start with our first coarse wall stone we'll probably go about 12 inches high plus three inches for the limestone cap be a really sharp look and then our basalt rocks will go right here in the middle. So we haven't decided anywhere from the seven to nine range sounds about appropriate for an area of this size as well as this exposure to create that level of impact. All right then, let's keep going. We have the retaining wall built around the outside. You can see we've got basically three full courses on this side, and I believe there's probably about two and a half, not even on this side. Fortunately for us, we did all of our due diligence correctly. Elevations worked out, everything's nice and level. On top of this will be a limestone, kind of a rock-faced coping all the way around this. So we'll have quite a few cuts that we have to do, but we will save that to the very end because we are going to be schlepping in anywhere from seven to nine basalt columns, and we don't want to ding up that coping stone. What we'll do is we'll hold off on the coping stone. We're gonna refocus our energy over there. Sounds like Daniel, Matt, and Ryan have got that hole excavated and sand is in. 
Yep, and there's Daniel down in the hole talking to Micho. So you can see Daniel hop up out of there. That's the other hole, so it's about 120 feet away. We're gonna focus on that, forego on making any further progress on this until we can get the basalt rocks in tomorrow. All right, so we are back. This is day three out here at our Society of Little Flower build. We got the, as you saw yesterday in the video, we got the retaining wall around the one circle built. You can see the guys behind me. We are unloading all the basalt rocks that we're going to use on this feature as well as the one that we've got going over there. It's a little bit brisk this morning. I don't know if you can see my breath, but we do have a considerable amount of frost on everything as you can see. Little chilly, but by the looks of the sun over there, I think it's gonna warm things up just nice and toasty for us. So order of the day is get the reservoir finished up over on the other side, backfill with gravel, get it to the point where Micho and Juan can start building that retaining wall inside the circle so we get our base down, then we can start building our wall, which is that exterior wall or the one that's going to order the entire feature, get them to be able to get that done. And then we will refocus our energy over here with the basalt rocks over here. Hopefully by the time they get the wall built here, we can have the basalts done on the other side or at least roughed into the point where we can kind of flip flop and take back over doing that on this feature. So they're gonna be two identical features. Let's just say very, very similar features because we are using natural stone. They're not gonna look um, like mirror images of each other, but they're gonna look pretty dang close. That's the goal for today. I gotta stop drinking so much coffee on the way to the job site because I was talking really, really fast. So anyways, here's the basalt rocks. This is one of the products that we sell here at Aquascape. So you can see we've got one real man on the project and then one, you know, kind of half man. Harder, not smarter, not harder. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So the thing that I love about these basalt rocks is yes, they're all natural stone. They're all very, very heavy, but I love the coloration, the texture. Everyone is unique to itself. They are all snapped to certain lengths. We have 36 inch ones, we have 30 inch ones, and then we have 24 inch ones that you can see. So we've got a few different sizes to choose from, but they are all a little bit different unto itself, giving it that one of a kind custom creation look that we are always, always going for. You can see they're cored out in the bottom and they are sod cut to give them the specific length that we're looking for. We are going to use three quarter inch pipe up through here. This is the top of one of the rocks. You can see it's cored out, but then at the top it's cored out just a little bit bigger. And what that does is that allows room for one of those core lights to be inserted onto the top of the pipe so that you can actually light up the water as it's coming out of the basalt rock. I love the way these things are engineered. They're so fun to work with because we can really do a lot of different things with them. And it's just, it's fun. They look very, very unique and they are heavy, which you wouldn't be able to tell by the way Micho carries them around. But what do you think, Micho? Are we gonna get after it today? Oh yeah, man. I think we'll probably get this one done pretty close with the other one. Be slick, right? It's gonna look good. Cool, cool. All right, I'm gonna put the camera down and stop flapping my gums and give these guys a hand so we can start rolling. Okay then. So kind of reached the end of day three. You can see the sun's going down. Really, really pleased with the progress. We have our basalt columns installed, fully plumbed. You can see the two manifolds that we have going on over here, nice and clean. We will end up covering those with gravel once we get everything dialed in. We're gonna have two pumps in the pump vault. One's gonna discharge out that way. The other one is coming out this way. Two inch and a half lines. And you can see it comes down, elbows over, and then starts spidering off into all that one inch line. We did use inch and a half ball valves. I like the bigger ball valves. They tend to stay dialed in a little bit longer than some of the smaller ball valves do. And then at the very end, you'll notice a stub of pipe with a cap on it. What that's doing is that is putting back pressure on the plumbing and it's pushing all the water out. And the idea is also reducing on the discharge ends of all the ball valves is we're creating back pressure and we're trying to equalize out all that flow of water that's getting pushed out from that pump into all those individual one inch lines. The reason we went with two pumps on this is in the 
winter time, I want them to be able to shut one pump off. And the idea is, is the exterior, like this one, that one, that one, this one, this one, there's that one over there. There's six around the outside perimeter of the basalt formation that is going to be ran by one pump. And then the interior portion will be ran by the pump that is feeding those five right there. So the idea is they run the interior one and shut down the exterior or the pump that's uh, providing water for the exterior ones so that they can run this feature a lot longer through the winter time and they're not having to plumb some of these other ones. They'll still get those ice castle formations and it is a very, very large reservoir. It's a 11 foot diameter hole that goes about three and a half feet below top of patio over here. It's a considerable hole and reservoir volume wise. They should be able to get that done. You can see we've got the electric inside. That's a waterproof box, everybody out there. Just so you know, all of our low voltage lighting will be using quick connects and our transformer will be mounted right next to it as well and so will the two pump receivers so we've got that we've got a little bit more gravel and that we'll install to kind of backfill around all of the interior portion of the basalt columns so that we can really make those things rock solid we are going to put in a couple accent boulders probably one somewhere over here so that we can bring the gravel up to hide all of that i don't know what you would call it that foundational work for some of these basalt rocks because the bottom of these basalt rocks are actually four to five inches above even what our coping will be because we only have 36 inch rocks and we wanted to have as high of impact as possible we vaulted some of those rocks so we ended up using three large aqua blocks as well as some additional bricks and things like that to prop some of those 36 inch basalt rocks in the middle up so that they are about four to four and a half feet above grade from this patio over here so we've got to disguise some of that probably put in another accent boulder over there and then let me show you where we kind of ended progress over here so mirror image so you guys know what you're getting into the matt micho and juan did a fantastic job building this retaining wall again same process over here you can see the interior ring that's holding back all of our base material which is the limestone chips down there they have one more course to go to build it at the same elevation as that other one we've got to bring a few more bricks tomorrow we have all of our gravel we've got our basalt rocks over here which are those beautiful mongolian basalts that we showed earlier so we have plenty to choose from there's probably five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen thirteen over here i doubt we'll use all of them because we only used 11 over there and we'll probably use the same amount if not maybe one less over here as well that is where we are going to wrap today get home early while the sun is probably be down by the time we get back to the shop but we made a hell of a lot of progress today proud of them and really excited with how it's turning out tomorrow probably won't be the finish line but we're gonna be dang close can't wait to get back at it tomorrow okay <laughs>